everybody. We're joined by Northwestern head coach Chris Collins. We'll start with the opening statement and then we'll take questions. Coach? I mean, what a game. Um, first of all, that atmosphere was incredible. I mean, uh, down the stretch of that game, it was so loud in there. You know, it was it was hard. And, you know, even as a coach, it was hard to, to signal play calls and get it. I mean, it was so loud. Um, and, you know, our crowd pulled us through. I mean, we we played a fantastic first half. You know, I thought everything we were trying to do was kind of coming to fruition. We were making it hard on Trace. You know, we had him in some tough spots. He wasn't able to kind of get going the way he has. And then in the second half, you know, they got some energy there. You know, I thought we had a chance when it was like at 15, 17. I thought we had two or three just really wide open threes. That might have got the game back to kind of 20 points. We missed them. Excuse me. They ran out and got a couple threes. And, and obviously, Trace started getting more comfortable. Uh, I thought we got a little tired, which, which then hurt our defense. You know, our defense is so predicated on energy and effort and because we're scrambling. You know, we're, we're, we're trapping the post and you got to be, you got to fly around on the backside. I thought we were late on some rotations. Trace made some great passes, big to big. They started getting comfortable, the, the game pressure, the momentum. And obviously, we, we didn't do everything right. We had a really costly turnover there at the end up to, I thought we took a couple bad shots, you know, at times. But just, I mean, Titus Verhoeven's bucket was enormous. You know, Boo drove in there, dumped it off to Titus. I think he had Trace and Race right on him. Each shot faked, he finished. They came down, scored. Boo hit a huge layup going to his left, you know, over Trace Jackson, which is not an easy feat. You know, and then, um, you know, obviously they scored again, and then we turned it over. It was tied. I did not want to take a timeout because I felt like we had our best guy with the ball with space. You know, we had a matchup we liked. We had the floor open. Had I called timeout, I would have tried to diagram that. I would have tried to get him the ball with space, you know, with an opportunity to make a play. So we let it play out. Um, you know, I, I thought he had the presence of mind to kind of wait to just the right time so that if he missed the shot, it would have been overtime. But fortunately, he made it because we were, we were running on fumes, I thought, you know, emotionally, with energy, everything that this week has meant. And man, so so proud of our guys. I mean, they deserve all this. It, you know, it's about them. You know, for them now to get to ten wins, I think for the second time ever, you know, in school history, you know, the the opponents that that, that we've gone toe to toe with and, and had an opportunity to beat, and you know, now put ourselves in position through fifteen games to to really play for for something really that really matters. You know, being right there in the league race. You know, and you know, I, I like I said, I. I I'm glad for the guys that they can kind of get the monkey because everything talks about tourney talk, tourney talk, tourney talk, and we're going to the tourney, you know. So that's great, you know. Now we can just focus on getting better and and continuing to figure out how we can be the best we can be and shore some things up and hopefully find some more wins down the stretch. Take questions. The right here, coach. You talked about being confident that you guys are going to make the NCAA tournament. Just now, you have two straight wins over top 14 teams. You feel like you team should be ranked as well. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really care. You know, I mean, I think it's all subjective. It's fine. I mean, we're the same people that would rank us would be the same people that picked us last in the league. So to me, it's all subjective. I mean, whether we're ranked or not, our guys believe in themselves. You know, I think the best way you get confidence is by learning how to win, you know, and, and, and learning how to win maybe when you don't play at your very best. You know, the Purdue game, we played at our very best down the stretch. This game, there were mistakes made. You know, we had turnovers, we took bad shots, we had defensives, but we still found a way to win. And, and that's the mark of a really tough, gritty team when you can do that. To the back. Um, Coach, boo booey, three of the final four shots, and the other one was an assist to Bird Moving. Yeah. What can you say about his performance today? Just big time. I mean, um, and, and he's been that way, you know, all year. I'm so proud of him. You know, there's no one you know, who's been more loyal and, and committed to this program and what we're trying to build over the past four years than, than Boo. You know, we put the ball in his hands as a freshman. A lot of you guys watched through some of those growing pains with him. You know, he, he showed flashes, but there were also times where you saw, man, it, is, is he ever going to get it? But we stuck with him. He continued to develop. He worked hard. Um, he's just playing with so much confidence. He's, he's gotten so much stronger. You know, his command out on the floor, his, his balance, he's getting to his spots. He's not only scoring, but finding other guys. 
Um, and, and I said coming into this year, if we were going to be a team that was going to be a factor, that our guards would have to play to an all-conference caliber. And, and they've done that and, and spearheaded by Boo. I mean, to this point, I'd be hard-pressed to, to find that he wouldn't be a first-team all-league all guy. You know, you look at his numbers, you look at what his team's done now, he's winning. Um, you know, he's, he's played terrific, and I'm, I'm happy he's on my team. When you have a guard like that, it gives you a chance, and he was terrific tonight. Matthew? Uh, Tyberry with a team high, plus 13. I know plus minus can sometimes be a complicated stat. Uh, but what did it mean to you to see him stay confident, play such a great game, and then also hit that big three down the stretch? Yeah, obviously hit a big shot. He'd been struggling, you know, with his shot. We, it's it's getting a little flat. You know, I've I've tried to I've been working with him a little bit. I got to get back in the lab with him the next couple of days. But you know, for him to step up and make that big one after he missed what his first five or six threes, you know, when the game was kind of in the balance there. But I thought his defense was was terrific. You know, we uh, we put him on Hood Shafino, you know, most of the second half. We just we felt that matchup. You know, we had Boo and Chase off the ball on their wings, and we felt confident putting tie on, on Hood Shafino, who's one of the best, you know, young guards in the country, and I thought he did a great job. You know, he got some steals, he got some rebounds. You know, his energy is infectious, and that's the one thing with him. You know, he struggled a little bit the past couple games, and I felt like he's lost a little bit of his energy out there, and we need him. We need him to be upbeat and energetic because we feed off of that, and um, I thought he found other ways. That's what I've talked to him about, like when you're not shooting well, Find other ways to impact the game, you know, and he did that tonight with uh, with his defense and his rebounding. To the left, uh, Chris, what did you make of the um, chance toward Miller? What's that? What did you make of the chance? I didn't like Miller? it. Didn't like it. You know, I, I uh, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, it's not something I condone. I, you know, I I uh, there to me. First of all, Miller is a part of our family. You know, it was not a contentious thing. I love Miller. He gave us three great years. I'll be forever indebted to what he brought to the program. He knows there's no bigger fan of him than me. Um, I would have liked it to be a little bit more cheer for us. You know, I mean, I, I'm I'm always big on that. It was so loud. It, I mean, I, I wish I had the power to kind of tell everybody to stop. But, um, you know, I, w I wasn't a fan of that because, first of all, the way I feel about Miller, um, you know, what he was in this program. But I just, I'm not a big believer in that. I'm, I just think, you know, cheer loud for us. You know, don't. You know, they were, we were super loud. We didn't, you know, down the stretch, our fans were amazing. And it was towards us. You know, it wasn't directed toward the other team. So, obviously, it wasn't something that I was a fan of and something that I, I, I wish wouldn't have happened. Back. Hey, uh, you, you talked about yesterday about how you're trying to keep these guys in the keel after the win yeah. over Purdue. Early on, I know you said you made some mistakes, but did you kind of get a feeling that that wasn't going to be a problem tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think our guys know how good Indiana is. I mean, what did they? What were they eight and one in their last nine games? I mean, there was no hotter team in a in a conference than Indiana. They they just went to Michigan and won. They beat in Purdue. You know, they'd gone to Illinois and won. You know, Trace was playing at an ungodly level. Um, he was good at him and Edie are by far the two best players in the league. So, you know, I think probably what helped us after the Purdue game was knowing that Indiana was coming to town and. Our guys certainly celebrate. I wanted them to I, on Sunday. I mean, you do something like that, as special as that was, to, you know, I said, hey, guys, go out and, and have fun and, and enjoy this win. But when we come back tomorrow, we got to dig in on Indiana. And I thought we did. You know, we, we got enough maturity in our locker room where guys, our guys understood. And, and I think you saw that by how we started the game. You know, if there was a residual effect, we wouldn't have been up by 20 more points in the first half. I mean, our guys were really ready to play. I just thought Indiana made, made a few adjustments. They got comfortable. We got tired. And then all of a sudden, bang, it's a ball game. And, and we really had to grind it out at the end. Back left. Just what does it say? I mean, top, top wins over top 25 teams in back-to-back -back games. I think that's the first time in about 13, 14 years. That only, that's only 13, 14? I'm used to them saying 40 or 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what three straight is. Yeah, so, okay. So I'll have all to right. But what does that say about just where this program is? And do you think that Purdue game kind of gave them some confidence going into this one? Yeah, I definitely do. But but we've had other really good wins. I mean, like you know, I don't I don't think many people have won in Assembly Hall this year. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't mm -hmm. followed, but I don't know if anybody has. I mean, I don't know how many people have gone into the Breslin Center this year and won. You know, at Michigan State. Um, so you know we. Purdue was a great win, but but it's been building throughout the year, you know, to be able to, you know, go to Wisconsin in the sixth game in 13 days and, and grind one out late in the game. 
Um, you know, I think all of those things build up your confidence. It's like anything. If you lose all those games, then you start to have negative thoughts. You know, and, and we've been through that in the past. You know, it's almost like the, oh, how, let's invent a new way to lose tonight. But, but now our guys are finding ways to win, you know, because they believe they should. They believe in each other. You know, we have a couple elite guards that are playing at a high level, and, and everybody else is playing their role, you know, to the best of their ability. Chris, Boo's been coming for a long time, but I think sometime in the middle of this year, just not forcing shots. I mean, you're talking yeah. about this thing. When, when did you see that sort of crystallized, like, you know, when to give it up in the hugest moments? Yeah, I just think this year there's just been a calmness to him. There's been a maturity. I mean, he's uh, he's playing like a senior, you know, and, and I think he's he he's he's comfortable with who he is. He believes in himself. He's always had amazing confidence. I mean, since day one, he's always believed. And and to me, that's half the battle. If you want to be a good player, you got to believe. You got to be your own biggest cheerleader. So he's always had that self belief. But I just think his experiences over time, you know, when to attack, when to kind of pull it back. He's a much better defensive player, you know, than he's ever been. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying, if, some, if somebody had told you, I don't know, November, hey, mid-February, you'll you'll be working on getting better, not be worrying about where you're going to be in the postseason, what would you have said? Let's go. <laughs> you know, like, uh, obviously, you come into every year, you know, wanting to be at that level, you know, wanting to win. The Big Ten is very hard league to compete in. I mean, you guys have seen we have so many quality teams in this league, so many great coaches, so many great players. Um, you know, for our guys now to have our 10th conference win through 15 games um, is, is remarkable, you know, not only for them, but, you know, historically for this program. You know, we've, we've, we've never been in this territory, and it's a testament to these guys. They're, they're creating history. They're making, making their mark on this program, which is really cool. That's what I said. I mean, that's, that was what a big reason why I wanted to coach at Northwestern because I felt like it was an opportunity to do things that had never been done and in your life and that's kind of what we tell kids in recruiting you know we might not have the tradition yet or the pros or the winning or all that but you're seeing now our crowds are as good as anyone out there you know because we're starting to show we're a team that's good we can compete and our guys are are leaving an incredible mark and legacy on this program and they deserve it you know the, the negativity they dealt with the whole off season you know the, the uncertainty the, the the talk about where the program was at and for those guys in that locker room to just ignore that noise and just to say no we're gonna we're, that's not going to be the story that's not going to be the narrative we're going to figure out how to win and you know that's what's been fun for me you know is, is being able to be those guys coach because they're they're taking me on a hell of a ride right now it's been really fun no uh coach you mentioned watching the maturation of Boo and to an extent the rest of this team throughout the year. Just four turnovers this entire game today. That's an excellent mark. How important is it to you that the offense, even when the shots aren't necessarily falling, that at least you're getting those good looks and not giving your opponent a chance? Yeah, I mean, our margin for error is very slim on the offensive end. You know, I mean, we, we have our limitations. You know, we have a hard time at times where, you know, we have a hard time scoring. You know, we're getting better with that. I think we've gotten better. But um, when you turn the ball over, it makes it even worse. You know, so we've, you know, it's something I feel like that over the span of 10 years, we've done a lot of things not so well, but I think we've always kind of valued the ball. You know, if you look at it, it's something that we've really tried to focus on is knowing that we need to value our possessions. We need to try to get a good shot or at least a shot on every possession. And they were pressing us the whole game. I mean, they were picking us up. They were trying to get into our legs. They were trying to wear us down. Now, I wish we would have only been at three turnovers because the fourth was pretty costly, but, um, but overall, to only have four turnovers tonight was pretty remarkable, the guys. So last. We're now at the point of the year where you're starting to play most games. It's teams you've already played once. What goes into that scouting process when it's a team you've already played and you're already familiar with? I think that's the hardest part about coaching in the Big Ten because the respect level you have for the other coaches. You know, now when, when you've played someone, you know when you're going against someone like Coach Woodson, Coach McCaffrey coming up this weekend, Coach Painter. You know, there's going to be adjustments. Nobody's just going to roll out there and do the same thing again. And, and we've tried to do that as well. You watch film. You try to see, okay, what are some things we did well against this team? Where did they hurt us? You know, and, and what do we need to really shore up? And that kind of becomes the basis of what you do in these two games. I mean, we as coaches have always fought to have, like, multiple game day preps. You know, we, we very rarely have one day preps in this league. And that that's really helps the coaching and the scouting because you get multiple days to really kind of focus on tendencies, focus on favorites, 
And that's why if you don't make adjustments within a game, you'll get exposed. You know, because these, these coaches are too good and, and they know what they're doing. And, you know, fortunately, having some older guys, we've been able to handle that pretty well. Mark? Uh, Coach, Chase and Boone both had 11 points in the first half. And, of course, and Robbie, Todd combined 13. But, I mean, the defense limited to Indiana to 20 points, right? So how do you give it more to the offense's production or the defense production or just shows, you know, puts on the display of, you know, what we can be when both sides are clear? Yeah, I mean, I thought the first half we played fantastic. You know, I thought we were we had energy. Obviously, coming off the game Sunday, you, you worry about the residual effect. I didn't believe it would be there because of that crowd tonight and because of the respect we had for Indiana. But to come out that first half too and have that kind of energy and to turn them over and to get into our traps and then come down, I think we scored 39 points. I mean, it was a great half. You know, and you almost wish that the game was over at that point because you knew those guys were going to rally themselves. You don't win eight out of nine in this league without going down the fight. I mean, I knew. I knew they were going to come out. I knew they were going to come after us. You know, like I said, I thought we had in the middle part of the second half, kind of in that 14, 13, when it was still kind of 14, 15, I thought we had two or three, maybe even four, like wide open three looks that maybe would have kept them at bay a little bit, but we missed them. And then they came down, they scored, we couldn't get stops. They made a couple threes. You know, you start feeling some game pressure. So, but that first half was fun to watch our guys to be able to bounce back from a big win Sunday and to be able to put those 20 minutes together shows a lot about the team. Back up. Chris, uh, obviously you have very talented guards, but watching you twice this year, uh, the influence of Matthew Nicholson on their productivity, mm -hmm. almost invariably somebody's getting hung up on his screens. Can you uh, elaborate on what he means to you? Yeah, I, I think Matt's development is probably one of the most, you know, untalked about things with our team because our guards have been so good, you know, and, but you're talking about a guy who really has sat for two years, you know, and, and he's worked and he's gotten stronger and changed his body, but hadn't had a chance to play. And I think a big reason why a lot of you guys were skeptical about our team, and rightfully so, was what was the, gonna, the interior going to look like? You know, you knew you had Chase, you knew you had Boo, you knew you had Robbie, Ty coming back, you know, Julian who had played a lot. But, you know, what was the inside going to look like, you know, especially with the guys we play against in this conference? And the emergence of Matt this year, to me, has been great. His, his physicality in the paint, his shot blocking, his rebounding, you know, his effort, his screening. You know, and, and the more he plays, he's going to get better offensively. You know, that's part of the development, you know, for – and a lot of temp for a lot of intensive purposes, this is freshman year, you know, because he really hasn't played in games like this in these minutes. And I give Titus credit too. You know, I think Titus has been a nice, you know, piece for us to kind of bring in as an older guy, a sixth year senior, who can kind of steady that position. I think both those guys are playing their roles very well. And you're gonna look at the stat sheet and they both had two points. And you're gonna say, Man, they didn't do anything. Well, no, they did a lot. You know, their their energy, their ball screen defense. They're screening to get our guards open. Um, you know, I thought both those guys, Matt in particular, did a great job tonight against a very imposing front line. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask about Chase because he started four or five in the game, finished, I believe, one of ten. Yeah. Is there ever a thought of you know talking to him and being like, hey, it's time to impact the game in other ways, or does he just have that that green light that says, okay, I expect you to shoot your way out of it like you did against Purdue? Well, he has a green light as long as they're good ones, you know, and, and I thought he got off to a great start, but, um, and he would be the first to tell you, you know, I thought with his matchup that he da had down the stretch, I would have liked to see him attack the basket a little bit more. We need him to be aggressive. If he's not aggressive, that, you know, we need Boo and Chase to be aggressive, and we want them to be playmakers, and we trust them. I mean, they both have the green light to make plays. We just want to make sure, are, are they the right shots, are they the right plays? Now, there's sometimes in a game where you have to, you know, last five seconds of a shot clock. You know, you might have to make a shoot a step back or make a tough shot. But I thought in the second half, um, you know, I, I don't think he took the best of shots. But, you know, that he kept playing D, you know, and he kept – that's what I love. I mean, I, I, I've said that all along. I mean, Chase, it all comes from a competitive spirit. He believes in himself. He, he believes he can make those plays. You know, he single-handedly offensively won us the game the other day when he just had missed the whole game and then went crazy the last four minutes. So I want him to stay confident. I want him to stay, but, but continue. I think he's done a really good job this year of improving in a lot of those areas, and especially now that we get into these, you know, really meaningful games here late and as we approach postseason, 
you need those guys to, to really be great decision makers. So, right. Coach, you talked about that sense of confidence that you guys have, that calm in these clutch situations, when it hasn't necessarily been there in years past. Just, do you attribute that to winning, to senior leadership, just what goes into that? Yeah, I think both. You know, I, I think it's, uh, like I said, I mean, the only, you guys know, it's like anything. Like for me, like I felt like I could be, I, I was an assistant coach for a long time, you know, under Coach K, and you're always like, man, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready, I can do this. And then you get in that seat, and there are many times where like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's like, you know, you can only learn through your experiences. People can tell you, people, we can watch film and say, do this, do that. But until you go out there under the game, like, you know, this, these kind of crowds, these kind of opponents, until you go out there and actually do it well, you're not going to have that kind of feeling. And, and this year, I, I don't know what our record is in, in, in one possession games or five points or less, but I think it's pretty good. You know, we've lost a few. Um, you're not going to win them all, but you know, I've always said in this league, if you win, if you can win more close games than you lose, you'll be in pretty good shape. So, to answer your question, it is. It's, it's experience. It's belief. It's confidence. But now it's also because of achievement. Like I said, I mean, they, these guys, and you know, early in the year we played Auburn and we came up. You know, it was 43-42 and we lost by one. But we came out of that game and our guys were like, man, I think, I think that game showed our guys we can be pretty good because as talented as they were. You know, and then we went to Michigan State a couple weeks later and got that win and our guys were like, man, I, I think we could be pretty good. And I've just seen our confidence and belief continue to grow as the season has gone on. Time for one more question. Alex? Coach, you talked about that lead kind of being at 13, 14 points in the second half. but. Even though you value the ball, even though you had four turnovers, how much do those like early shot clock threes kind of feel like a turnover? Yes. Is that something you've got to clean up? Yeah, I thought we took some bad ones. Like I said, I thought, you know, there were probably three, four, five times I thought we could have attacked the basket. You know, especially when you're not – I mean, it's one thing if you're making them, you know, but we weren't. I mean, we go eight for 33. Um, and you never want to – like, for me, you, you know, I've said it all along, like I'm always very careful because I was a shooter. And when coaches put doubt in my head about when to shoot, when not to shoot, like that can that can play mind games with a guy, especially if he's, if he's a good shooter. So I never want our guys to feel like they can't shoot. Our guys have the green light. I want them to take good shots. But that's where you got to kind of understand where the game's at. You know, we haven't really been hitting. You know, I thought they were closing out to two or three of those that, that we could have shot fake, driven in there, and either gotten a better shot in the paint or a more wide open three. So. I mean, certainly for us guys, I mean, we're going to shoot threes. I mean, you look at our team and how we're made up, uh, we're going to shoot threes, but, but we have to continue to find, because you look, we were 14 for 14 from the free throw line. So how can we continue to find ways to get ourselves to the free throw line because that's a big strength of ours as well. All right, better wrap All right. Us up. Appreciate you guys. See you Sunday.